I know that everyone in this community really, really wants a good Dungeons and Dragons movie. I really want a good Dungeons and Dragons movie. And seeing people say, that looks like a good Dungeons and Dragons movie, is just, it, it, it literally warms my soul. Well, it looks like a good Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> See, movie. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's what we want. What does that mean? What can audiences expect? Uh, paladins are kind of holy warriors, so they're somewhere between knights and not really wizards, but they got some kind of casting ability. Um, so he's kind of a magical holy knight. Well, I've never played it. I'm too frightened. It sounds like witchcraft to me. <laughs> Satan suddenly appears in the room. I don't want to touch it. You did play it, uh, you spoke at the panel about playing the game with your family and your nephew's Dungeon Master. How long did you all play that game? Like four hours until my father had to leave for something. Um, but it was great fun and we laughed a lot. And my nephew got frustrated because we weren't playing it correctly, which made us all laugh more. It was just a good, it was a really, really good time. It was a really, really fun time. Have you planned your next quest? Uh, I did four months of a pretty serious quest, so I'm, I'm on a D&D break at the moment, but I can certainly see myself coming back. But it's an exciting also to be here not to talk about the next movie and it's installed in well, to be starting a new song. So that to me, I think, is, is at the heart of what I'm so excited about. It's like, I look at the world of, of, of franchises, and we have a lot of them, and I love them all, right? I love... I love all of them. So like it's not like I don't love them, but like I wanted like I wanted there to be room for like a new thing that we can like fall in love with and geek out with over the next decade. Like one of the things that was like the most interesting is like on occasion I'll get into Uber, right? And I'm in the Uber and the driver's very curious. He's like, what do you do for a living? And I'm not a good liar, so I was able to say, well, I, I produce movies. And then, well, what movies do you produce? Iron Man. And I'll have an Uber driver now who goes, that was my favorite movie when I was a kid. And I'm like, wow, a generation so quick that 2008 to now, like you were 10 and now you're a grown up driving Uber. And, and you've grown up with these movies. And so like to me, it's so important to have have like new things starting all the time so that like that generation has this thing that they grow up with that is just uniquely theirs. They were the one that saw it when they were 11 first and they were the ones who get to like love this thing for generations. So my hope is to have that, like to be creating something new and have a new thing out there in the world that we can all geek out over, you know, for a while. What was the always the appeal for both of you? I mean, for me, it's just how unique the tone of playing the game is and being able to sort of emulate that on the big screen. It is truly one of a kind. It's something that was really important to us to nail and get right. It's also what's fascinating and baked into the game is that it brings contemporary attitudes to a fantasy environment. You're playing as a modern kid or adult and yet you're in this world that's very foreign to you. And in a way, that's what we tried to bring to this movie. It's people who are relatable. They're not modern, but they are like us in many ways. And so hopefully the audience will see themselves in those characters. i played too many good guys for too long in my career. And now I've played too many bad guys. I like to really bore my audiences. <laughs> but I, I do think this film is pretty entertaining. I read the script and thought this won't be for me at all. Uh, and it was so funny. It's a proper piece of... Monty Python, but very British humor, I thought. When you mention uh, Monty Python, is that kind of controlled, chaotic satire, that very British sensibility, something you've always wanted to do on screen? Yes, well, I was raised on Monty Python. We, we used to, you know, set our clocks by it and repeat every sketch at school the next day. So uh, it's all that's all sort of deep in my DNA. And um, I feel like it must have been a very influential thing on the, the, the Jonathans who wrote and directed this film. I mean, that clip we played just now of the dead bodies, is you can't get more Monty Python than that. <laughs> the audiences have obviously seen you play smaller in the world. Uh, but what's it like to really indulge in the comedic side with this movie? Um, it's fun, as you hope the comedic side. Um, I mean, I thought it was the same with this one. I did, did, did alright on this um, it's every, You come to every job first, you know, and I've done the same thing in, in that respect for the past 
10 years. You kind of look at each script as though you've never looked at a script before. You see what it is on its own TV. And the joy of this script was it wasn't what I expected. It had a huge amount of heart, a huge amount of humor. And I think that that sense of compassion and fun and adventure paints with a really wide pattern in this movie. So I think that I'm now really confident taking that out to the rest of the world. Do you see the potential for a universe? I mean, look, those are the kind of movies I feel that I know how to produce. So I'd be crazy to say like, well, I think this is a one-off and there'll never be another saga in this world again. Like it's the richest world ever. I mean, it's just like the densest, most like open-ended sort of lore that you could ever imagine. You could make any kind of movie in this world. You could make a heist movie. You could make a romantic comedy. Like you can literally do anything in the world. It's that big, it's that diverse. You can make any kind of film. So it's like, yeah, I think we can make a lot of stuff and I'm excited about it. Like it's a great precipice to be standing on, but the main way to do that is to make sure the first thing is good. And and that was one of the things that, you know, Kevin always would tell me, you know, be like, I'd be like, oh, we should save this idea for the second movie. And Kevin would say, there's no second movie, Jeremy. If you save something for the second movie, there will be no second movie. And so I think we've like used all the good ideas we have like in this movie. I, I think I've tried to take that to heart and we've like put as much in this movie as we can. All the fun ideas we had for this film, we put in the film. And, uh, and then hopefully we have more ideas if we are so lucky to, to need them. Does it feel like this movie's coming out at the exact right moment in the zeitgeist with it on Stranger Things and fantasy just coming back in such a big way? I mean, it's interesting, right? Like, um, I think fantasy's having a moment. I think the pandemic strangely left people very isolated and one thing they did to get through it was turn to playing fantasy games together online because they could still be with their friends and it was something that like you don't just like oh, let's talk for three hours on the phone that's hard let's play a game together where we also talk for three hours on the phone that's easy and so I think it became a thing where like people have just been playing and playing and playing and like being with each other and experiencing like the world of D&D &D through Zoom with each other, over Twitch with each other, whatever. And so it's like, yeah, this feels like the right time because it's, uh, it's, it's like reaching a cultural kind of moment. But also the themes that we play with in the film are so, in my mind, universal that it's always the right time for this movie. Because it's a movie ultimately about finding family and like getting through divisions and like finding a way through together and that to me is the, the 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 theme that makes every movie great like every movie that i've ever been involved with that i've loved has had that kind of as the theme right like we're going to become this weird family together and that's exciting and so it's really fun man to, to kind of be adapting this and i just you know i i really hope that we um that we do it justice and that we um make something that people can like get behind and feel good about we have seen fantasy really into the zeitgeist in the last decade but yeah often it's very somber, very sure. serious, and I think you heard all the gales of laughter at the yeah. panel and it went over so well and it was a conscious choice to try and return to maybe the Princess Bride-esque humor of 80s. Ab yes. Absolutely. I mean, I think finding levity in these situations is the, is the best, especially when the stakes are so high, giving the audience permission to laugh and catch their breath, I think is something that's really important to us without undermining the stakes or taking the piss out of the genre because that was very important to us as well. d and has really reinvented the zeitgeist as well, and I'm curious, do you think Stranger Things has helped in that at all? It seems to have, certainly. I, mean, <laughs> I think that the, you know, the game was kind of on the rise um, even before that, but that definitely put it in the, in the mainstream way it hadn't been before. If you can compare the dragons in this to what we've seen in other shows, yeah. what should people expect? Well, we really wanted to make the dragons kind of unique in their own right. Um, there I are think we have the finest dragons. For folks who, you know, are, have, are only experiencing fantasy so far through Game of Thrones or Lord of the Rings, how does your dragons and your world differ? Like, if you look at all those things, right? Like, they're they're very set in stone. <laughs> Right, like you're not gonna change Lord of the Rings. Like it has been written by Tolkien and it's done and this is it and this is what happens and this is the story and these are the beats. And so there's not much malleability there. I mean, a director obviously and a writer and a, and a star can bring something to it, but like you have to tell those stories. Like you, you change it, you're gonna be in trouble, right? What's great about this world is it is a world that is driven by storytellers. That's why I think so many of the great filmmakers of our time grew up playing D&D. &D. It's this communal storytelling that happens around a, 
around a dining room table when you're 13 and you go, I love telling stories. I'm going to keep telling stories. I'm going to tell stories for a living. And I think it's like this wellspring of like, uh, of, uh, of creativity that comes from playing D&D for a lifetime. So I think like, I think like the thing that makes us different is we get to tap into that and we don't have to go, well, this is what happens. And we have to speak exactly in this way and exactly with this kind of cadence and this kind of you know, version of English language, etc. Like we can make people talk like people talk today because people were playing D&D yesterday on a new campaign and they talk like a kid from Jersey and they talk like a kid from Paramus and they talk like a kid from California and they talk like a kid from Oklahoma and they, they're real kids. And so you can like make a movie where people talk kind of in a real way. And what's fun about the film is everyone's kind of like that except Rege who comes kind of in from a world where he's like I'm from a very serious fantasy thing and I'm going to speak exactly you know because he's a paladin right he's like Ugh, I'm down I'm very very sincere all the time and uh, and it makes for a really fun dichotomy with him and Chris I was going to say how was he in that audience we had electrifying but also soul warming because I know that I know that everyone in this community really, really wants a good Dungeons and Dragons movie. I really want a good Dungeons and Dragons movie. And seeing people say, that looks like a good Dungeons and Dragons movie, is just, it, it, it literally warms my soul. Well, it looks like a good Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. That's what we want. Thank you.